Welcome into episode 20 of Runner's Recap with Rod Barnes. As always, we are happy yes. to have you here, Coach. I'm happy to be here. How are you feeling on this day? I feel great today. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, we've had two really good days of practice, and whenever that happens, uh, we all feel better. So uh, <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, seems like our guys have a little bit more fire than they've had in the last couple of weeks. They have a little bit better focus. So I'm excited to see what happened this weekend. All right, well, we will look ahead, but first let's look back a little That's bit. We call it recap for a reason. 72-58 uh, <laughs> loss yes. in the final home game of the senior yes. se or season on senior night to right. Cal Baptist. So, <laughs> yeah. It was a yeah. tough game. Uh, first of all, Cal Baptist is a really good team. Uh, we beat them at their place, of course, and uh, I knew it would be a tough game for us. Uh, I was really concerned all week because I, I didn't think we had the proper focus. And as our coaches were working with our players, uh, there was just a lot of different things that, that I felt like uh, we were slipping on, that we had not really uh, taken hold of something that they do. Uh, they shoot the three well. They did a really good job of coming out and establishing their pace of the game. And that's, that really concerned me uh, throughout the game, that we couldn't get the game into the rhythm that we wanted to. So uh, it was a great win for them, bad loss for us. You don't ever want to lose, especially on homecoming or the last game, you're sending your seniors out. Uh, but I think it was a learning experience for our younger guys. Uh, and I think that's why we've had two really good practices, uh, hopefully a third one coming up soon. So uh, again, uh, sometimes during the season, you're not going to play as well. And I think we've went through a couple of weeks trying to find ourselves out the few devastating losses. So hopefully we back ready to go because uh, we have three more games and then the tournament. And 58 points, that was the, uh, the lowest score yeah. for you guys, the lowest amount of points that you put on your home court this season. Yeah. So is that, was the key maybe, as you said, you feel in the fire this week, were mm -hmm. the guys maybe losing the fire, didn't have that fire that maybe that everyone should have had on a night like senior night? Well, I just think, uh, you know, again, you have a lot going on. I mean, we spent a lot of time with our guys on leading up to senior night. And this has probably been one of the more emotional Mm -hmm. kind of teams uh, that they, they're kind of a up and down uh, from an emotional standpoint it's easier for them to get up real quickly and it's kind of easier for them to get down so I just tried to talk with them about that uh, finishing strong and and one thing is that we don't really focus on we don't focus as much on a lot of outside things and I started feeling like they were kind of coming in guys were concerned and had certain feelings about senior night and the last home game and where we were kind of, you know, go after this. And, and sometimes when you do that, you forget the, the game. You mm -hmm. forget really the most important thing. And that's to me at that particular point, winning the game. So you, it's nothing that you get upset and mad about because you've asked these guys for two years, three years, four years to develop these really close relationships. And then all of a sudden, they realize that this is the last time that we may be on our home court together. They realize that this is the last homecoming or whatever they may feel in themselves. So that makes it tougher, you know, uh, for us that. Some teams handle it well. Some teams come out and get excited. They fight for the seniors. Sometimes, which I was concerned with this team, they get as emotional as the guys that are leaving, and it affects your play. And I, I thought, Again, giving uh, Cal Baptist credit, I thought they jumped on us early, and I think we started to have some doubt, uh, you know, during the first beginning of the first half. I thought we kind of found ourselves and got back on track, but again, it wasn't enough to win the game. Uh, the game just was not played at the pace. We played faster than that at home. Once they got a lead, they started working the clock. They got good free throw shooters, and it was played their way. We did not control the game, the tempo, and that normally doesn't happen with our team. Win or lo lose, we use the control at home. Right, and we've yeah. seen that, of course, throughout the season. So yeah. one, one guy I wanted to ask you about, one of your seniors, Jane Suber, he was yes. coming off injury. He had such a high point at the beginning of the season, especially offensively. He, of yeah. course, had 11 boards. He's been so good yes. with the rebounds all season, but he hasn't been scoring as much. Right. Right. Has that been a part of the game plan, or are people kind of keying in on him and not they allowing are. him to put up the points? Well, it's two things. Uh, it, for, uh, first, he's, he's not a guy that was a big scorer you know, in his career. 
And he started scoring early, and now people are starting to adjust. And he's one of those guys that have not experienced enough offensively. When you take a guy like Damian Durham or Jarkel Joyner, those guys have been scoring all their life. Yeah. So if you try to take something away from them or you focus on them a little bit more, they kind of make the adjustment on the run because they're so used to scoring. James is different than that. He's been a guy that until this year he had not been scoring away, <laughs> and he started off early. And, you know, uh, I think people are starting to really take notice to him. And what he is is he's a really good defensive player. He's a really good rebounder. He's continued to do that. The, the scoring was kind of a, a plus for us, yeah. kind of, you know, <laughs> icing on the cake for us. And it made us really, really good because when he scored double figures, that was like 10 more points than we weren't expecting to get. And now that people are focusing on him, uh, I still think he needs to score more than he is the last four or five games. Uh, but he may not be a double-double guy every right. night, but he's continued to do what we – recruited him for is that the rebound and defend and uh, like you said the other night he had 11 you know rebounds eight of them offensive so he's continued to play hard but I think all of our team our whole team has not really been as good as we were uh, earlier and uh, again I'm excited because just as a coach when you start seeing your team uh, work with the same kind of focus and intensity and you know that there's going to be highs and lows during the season uh, we probably hit our low at the wrong time, mm -hmm. and uh, now we've got it. We got time to get back. We got time to get going, because always the ultimate goal is to win the tournament. So uh, we've got time to get things going. I think our guys are starting to work towards that. And one guy that's been so consistent, a sophomore guard, Jarkel Joyner. Yeah. We saw him kind of creep up at the beginning of the season, but he's hit his pace and he put yes. up 22 points right. against CBU. So what have you seen from him and how proud are you to see a young guy kind of take that leadership of the offense the way he mm -hmm. has? Well, uh, you know, we recruited him. I, I thought, you know, when we recruited him, I told people that uh, the media and, and our fans and boosters and everyone I could tell, uh, before he leaves, you're going to buy the ticket just to come watch him play. <laughs> he's fun to watch. And uh, now he's starting to really find himself. He's worked extremely hard, but I think the biggest thing is for him is he's really, really confident, and our team is relying on him, and he's really stepped up in the scoring area for us. So uh, we've got to get some other guys playing better uh, to kind of help him because he's doing his part on the offensive end. Uh, we've got to get a little bit more help. Like the other night we scored 58 points. It's just not enough. Uh, but, again, it's not too late. And, and we're hoping that some of the shots that we miss we'll make. Uh, some of the guys that played good early, Greg Lee is another uh, yeah. guy that played well early, shot the ball well early, hasn't been doing that lately. And, uh, again, uh, this week he's had two good practices. So hopefully uh, that will translate to Saturday night when we play Grand Canyon. And one thing ahead of senior night that James Suber said to me that really struck me was that we haven't seen this team come together fully yet. Yes. We've seen the highlights, and of course, as we're talking about, James <laughs> had it in the beginning of the season, Drake yeah. Hell's hitting it now. But is that still something left that you're waiting to see this team do where everyone on the court hits their stride at once? And is that team going to be as dangerous as we expect? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they can be. That's, that's the thing. Uh, I, I thought we were hitting our stride. I right. thought we were really on our way. And then we took a couple losses, but in between that we had injuries. Uh, we lost Taze Moore before that, and all of a sudden Ricky, you know, uh, hurts his shooting hand. So it kind of slowed our pace yeah. down. Uh, and I think that was the thing. I thought we were playing really well. I thought uh, not as well as we possibly, uh, but playing really well at that point. Uh, in the season, and I was like, man, we're gonna, we got a chance to be special. And uh, now, uh, hopefully, as you said, if we can make that happen, uh, we'll have a special team. Our team has played everyone in our league. You know, even though we lost yeah. the other night to CBU, we beat them at their place. We played New Mexico State, two really good games at their place, at our place. You know, they're at the top of the league. We also played GCU really well here, but we get a chance to play them again. We beat Utah Valley here. We beat uh, Seattle here. So we've played well enough. We, we, we feel like we're good enough. Uh, we feel like we're the team that once we get everybody healthy, 
uh, that we could do that. We're running out of time, as which I told them that we're running out of time to put it all together. But again, I, I thought this week was as healthy as we've been in a month. Taze Moore had a full practice. Darren Purser had a full practice. Justin Davis had a full practice. So uh, it's been a long time since we had everyone on the court practicing for full practice, including contact. And, uh, and that's a good sign for us. So hopefully I know our team is more confident because we have everybody back. Uh, hopefully, again, that's translated into playing really well come Saturday night. Yeah, the ebbs and flows of the season, right? Highs Always. and lows. And yeah. something that would be uh, super helpful for you guys, and I'm sure, of yeah. course, with confidence, is, as you said, getting that road win at right. GCU. And it's yeah. happened. We see some of the teams in the WAC <laughs> do it to yeah. GCU. So now yeah. uh, ball's in your court. <laughs> and so what would be the difference maker, do you think, to be able to win out there in Arizona? Uh, well, yeah, I think the biggest thing is for, for our team is, is just the confidence of having everyone back. Like. This is a team, as I mentioned earlier, they're very emotional. When one guy get hurt, they all take it as the team is hurt. You know, when, when we got one guy down, uh, we lack some confidence that we really need. And and some of that's maturity. Some of that is just some of our young guys. You know, when Ricky got hurt, you know, we all were looking around and, and the coach was like, hey, next guy up. Right. They were looking around like, that's our point guard. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, so that's the kind of, thing that you have with inexperienced teams sometimes. Uh, and as, as I told them, you know, it's part of it. You know, you've you got to take it for what it's worth. Uh, you can't let it affect you long ter term because we're the same team a month ago that were playing for first place. We're just not playing as well, and we need to do that. And we can do that. So we're not asking our team or asking nothing of each other that we hadn't asked and we've received. Uh, earlier in the year. And of course, uh, three games left, so you get to see GCU and the yeah. Utah Valley, the two of the teams at the top right now. Right. But what's what's your message, your key message to these guys as these weeks dwindle down and we get right around the corner from the WAC tournament? Yeah. I mean, you've mentioned a lot of points, but what's the message to kind of key in on these emotions and yeah. use them as a positive? Well, take each day, take one day at a time. Uh, that's what we talked about with practice, just take one day at a time. Uh, we realize we haven't played well. We're not going to correct it, you know, by taking all of this big deal. You know, we've broken it down to certain things we want to accomplish defensively and offensively, how we want to play. And let's just focus on that right now. And then if we can, you know, focus each day, uh, we realize that if we start playing well, and the only way we're going to do that has got to be a step by step. We can't just jump and say, hey, we're going to pop up and everything's going to go well. You know, we got to get a little bit more scoring inside. So we've got to get the ball to James or, or Greg Lee. Someone's got to get us a couple of buckets. On the defensive end, we've got to give up a few less transition baskets, which we've given. We've been focusing some, and it's worked the last couple of games of not putting people on the free throw line too much. So there's some things that we can focus on that keep our minds not necessarily on, you know, where we are in the standings, who we're playing. Because we believe that we can beat anyone. Yeah. And all, I mean, so if we take care of us and, and make sure, and that's even health wise, I'm constantly telling the guys we've got to take care of each other <laughs> and, and make sure, take care of ourselves so we can make sure that we get to the floor. Again, I, I don't promise any wins or anything because anything can happen on a, any given night. I, I've been really pleased with this week of practice, and I haven't been doing that. You know, it's been. Because, again, we get there and a couple of guys out can't have a full practice with the way you want to do. I felt the rhythm that I felt about a month ago uh, starting to kind of come. And, and as a coach, you realize that could happen. You know, we could have played not very well in the beginning of the year, and then all of a sudden the last four games, five games, we played great. So, you know, the thing for me and my concern is can we get this right before we get to Vegas? And that's what – our whole focus is, is getting everyone healthy, get everyone playing well. And uh, we'll get to Vegas and we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, see if things fall into place. Yeah. But we know this team has heart, so we do. that for sure, they yeah. will see that out there on the court. Right. Well, uh, speaking of your heart, heart. is okay. your heart pumping? Because we're about to do the breakdown with Vards, put you in the hot seat, Again. ask a few fun questions. Okay. You ready? 
I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, Coach. So um, I'm gonna get excited. I'm ready. <laughs> I know. Let's there go. you go. Shake yeah, it off. Shake go. it off. <laughs> so as we uh, talk about some of these losses, yeah. what do you think is the key factor to learning from a loss, or what do you hope that your players always take from a loss? Or it, be transparent. You know what happens a lot is, you know, you make excuses. You know, uh, and, and, and again, I could say, well, we we're injured. We're hurt, which we are, but really look at the basic picture of it. You know, we need guys to step up. And if you're transparent and truthful to yourself, you, you're able to, you know, address the issue. Uh, we've had a ton of games and opportunities that we didn't close. We talked about that early on. It happened to us in conference play. And then everyone's gotten better. We had a few injuries at the wrong time uh, that we really needed those guys to be playing, and it happened to us. So what, what you learn from that is we need to get deeper. You know, uh, we've got some guys that haven't played as well, need to play well. Uh, and, and the third thing is get healthy. You know, so if, if you don't look at those things for what they are, uh, from an overall standpoint as a program, you look, hey, man, we either got to develop the guys or our recruits have to be really good. But with this particular team, we, we've really got to look at ourselves and say we're better together with everyone, and we need everyone, and we need everyone to be healthy. And if you're not truthful about that, then you're going to continue to struggle. <laughs> All right, so there's the there's the message, that's the message, message from yeah. the losses. There always um, is one, right? And that's the thing you got to light the fire under yeah. the guys and next man up mentality totally, is, yes. is a real thing. Yeah. All right, well, more of a fun question now. Okay. Hopefully, if, I don't know if that one was fun or not. That was good. But uh, Space Jam, a big time movie. I know growing Space up, Jam. that was a huge movie for me and probably started my like love for Space MJ. Jam. But Space Jam, they're going to be remaking one. The news came out that LeBron James will be doing a Space Jam 2. You excited? <laughs> Silence yeah, has I, I am a, I'm excited <laughs> because there's Space Jam fans that would enjoy having a Space Jam 2. That's too. me. <laughs> For me, I, I'm excited because you're excited. <laughs> But come on. I'm excited for you. That was that was an awesome movie. That was an awesome movie. Michael's Secret Stuff, remember? Yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, but. <laughs> Not a movie guy? <laughs> I, I like Space Jam, but. Okay. They got to make their money, right? All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> LeBron right. has to do something that follows him. That's why he moved to Hollywood, yeah, are we? exactly right? so. <laughs> Space Jam, too. We're excited. The only way. <laughs> Um, coach, with your seniors, uh, you still have them, obviously, for, you know, hopefully a few more weeks and more yeah. after that. But what's been the most memorable thing for you from this senior class, if you can kind of put it into one thing? Wow. Oh, man, one thing. That's, that's I know, and they're all from different backgrounds. Yeah, right? You've got them at all kinda, different times. It's kind of tough. Probably what I've gathered from them there's a, uh, a hidden kind of respect. The, the thing I like about them, they respect each other for who they are, mm -hmm. and they are all four very different. Yes. <laughs> Normally when you have a senior class, guys will kind of uh, bend to be like another player or someone. Uh, these four guys are totally different. Uh, they stand on their own, but also they're very respectful of each other. And I think that is the thing that, looking from afar, that I've respected. Whether we have a meeting and the four seniors talk, uh, they usually get on the same page. Uh, they usually respect each other's time and their voice to speak. And whatever decision is made, uh, they come together and they push forward, and that's not always with a senior class. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you have what you call cliques, mm -hmm. but this here is uh, these guys really respect each other. But probably the, one of the most diverse uh, in characters that we have is, is this group of uh, seniors. But uh, that's the biggest thing for me. 
I, I thought that was very interesting, that yeah. diversity. You're talking about all different backgrounds. So you yes. have Bray, who grew up yeah. here in Bakersfield, and then right. you have a guy like Damien from Texas. Yes. James is from Philly. Yeah. And then you have Ricky from Mississippi. So yes. all areas of life, different backgrounds and cultures and upbringing yes. come together to come make together. the senior class. Pretty yes. cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and again, when you see them every day, uh, you, you hear them in the meetings, and, and again, they respect each other. Yeah. Uh, they each uh, would really uh, helpful to the rest of our team that I think is going to play not only into this season, but as we go forward, as in really respecting each other, but being themselves uh, to have their own thoughts, their own beliefs, uh, but also, hey, I respect you and willing to discuss it. And to me, that's huge nowadays. Yeah. Because people don't want to be in, they don't want to <laughs> listen. Yep. You know, so. No, very true. Uh, very cool to see, no yeah. doubt. So uh, we're in a hot point in basketball season, but we're in the starting point to the baseball season. Okay. And I don't know if you heard the news, but Bryce Harper has finally landed a team. So that has been the talk of. Ba the world of baseball for a while now and like the Dodgers. hundred billion dollars, right? Yeah, I think it's like two thousand million dollars <laughs> more than I could ever come up with in my mind. But right. hey, he got his money. So I was thinking he was going to get the Dodgers West Coast. He's a kid that grew up in Vegas, yeah. but he signed with the Phillies for a 13 year contract saying that he wants to end his time with this one team. Yes. So thoughts on, on those kind of contracts. 330 well, it, million, I think, guaranteed, which <clears throat> that's, that's a lot. Well, let me ask you this. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say this. Uh, I think if anyone was offered $300 million, I would say that's where I'm going to end my career <laughs> too. So I, it's, it's not like they offered him $2 million and he said, well, I just want to play and I'll take a pay cut to go to Philly. I mean, no, that's not the case. So if you think I'm worth, or I'm valued at $300 million. $330 million. You know what that sounds like? <laughs> so, I, you know, I, it's a lot of money. Uh, he's a very talented athlete. Yes. And uh, I don't think he's going to be moving. Yeah, no, he shouldn't. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if James Suber, I don't know if he's a baseball fan, but if he's yeah. happy from Philly that he got Bryce Harper. I, I, I will ask him. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see about that. Yeah. But you know what's crazy? So I saw this stat. With that amount of money, every time he touches the plate, he'll be making over $40,000. Every time he touches the plate. Yep. That's pretty insane. That That is insane. But hey. <laughs> Someone, someone's got to someone's someone's gotta make that money. We'll, we'll let Bryce Harper and LeBron James <laughs> and all those guys do it. <laughs> all right, Coach, so I teased last week. I usually do five questions. I'm yeah. leaving the fifth question for you to throw on me. You can put me in the hot seat because it's not just me here. It's you too. Okay. We'll give you, uh, give you all the power to ask right. the question. Well, well, this would be my question. <laughs> uh, give me one thing that you've taken away from your parents that you're reminded of weekly. Weekly? Okay. Whew. There's so many things. That's a good question, Coach. <laughs> Dang. Well, um, I Is will it say. Warm over I know. I, whoo, this jacket. <laughs> um, I would say, and I hope that this would be the answer that they would want me to say, but I mean, there's so much things to learn from your parents. And right. I, I've, I will start with that. So to get yeah. that out of the way, but. I think the, the number one thing is to have a grateful heart. And that's something that my parents remind me as I go through my struggles and you know my career and yeah. whether that be in college or when I went out to Pennsylvania for my first job and back here, they always want me to be grateful for every opportunity. And one of the number one things I'm most grateful for is family. And that's another thing. So those two things kind of go together, yeah. a grateful heart and my family. And they remind me that every day. So that keeps me grounded and gets me through a lot of stuff. Words of wisdom. You heard it right here. <laughs> hey, I've only learned from him. So <laughs> after after 20 episodes, I think I finally learned how to great. speak wisdom. All well, right. thank you, Coach. Yes. You asked a great question. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, we will catch up with you. See you sure. after you get back from your trip to Arizona. Yes. And um, as always, thank you all for joining us for Runner's thank Recap. You. We'll see you next week.